Olivia, it's Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am going to be taking a look at how we can use our stamps in different ways other than what they were perhaps intended. So I am going to do a one layer card today. So this is my card base. It is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And this stamp set here is called Passion Flower, and it's almost a kind of cartoony style, I guess, gorgeous large stamp. But if you have any of these ones here, they would work well. From left to right on the screen right now, it is the Garden Spray and then the Scented Blooms and then the Five Daisies. But as I said, I'm going to use the Passion Flower one today and I'm going to start off with a thin strip of masking paper. Now for this, this is not really um, like really intense masking. So although I'm going to use the Gina K masking paper here, you could easily just use a piece of copy paper with some removable adhesive on the back or you could use some post-it notes and just cut them into the right shape but I am going to cut this down and actually I decided to cut it a little bit uh, skinnier as well I think it ends up being around half an inch I just cut it to how big I th thought I wanted it to be so I don't measure I just kind of eyeball it and see what I wanted and then this is my card base and I'm going to stick this on and then stick it around the edges so it keeps my card nice and flat now I am going to use a stamping platform for this one. This is the Press to Impress one and this is from Craftstash. You can get that from the US site or the UK site. This is where you can get those little magnets that have those little um, pink holders in them and you can buy those as replacements. You can buy replacement foam, you can buy the grid sheets for the back of this, uh, which I don't have on at the moment, but you can kind of buy replacements for everything and it's a pretty good price point as well given that it's a stamping platform. So here I'm just going to mask off underneath that uh, little piece that little strip of masking paper so you'll see what I mean in just a minute then I'm going to use some VersaFine onyx black which stamps really nice and dark beautiful crisp pigment ink and at the moment I am really enjoying using clear embossing powder to heat set all of this and set all of the ink that means that there is just one less problem that I might face later on when it comes to smudging inks and things and seeing if they are dry. I also like that kind of nice little uh, gentle subtle shine that it gives. But it is up to you if you'd like to do this step and you could just heat set your ink and that would work just as well here. I'm not doing anything special um, that really requires the heat embossing. I just like the look of it and again it eliminates one problem further down. Now I'm turning the card upside down and here's where I can just use partially a bit of my stamp again. Now I'm kind of using the other side of my stamp so it doesn't look like I've got the exact same pattern top and bottom. It is going to be like for the top I actually did use the top of the stamp and for the bottom I did use the other side of the stamp but there is a little bit of crossover because the stamp wasn't wide enough so I've shifted it down. But it's really nice to be able to kind of use these big, bold, large stamps in more ways than just stamping them one time in the middle of our card. So it means that we get more value for money and we can use them in lots of different ways rather than just the one really obvious way that we see when we look at these flowers. And if you didn't have just the one really large big stamp, then you could obviously mask and re-stamp lots of different leaves and flowers and things. And that way you could get a really nice cluster as well. So depending on what you have in your stash, you're able to recreate this fairly easily. Now for this, you can see the really nice shine that it's left. And I am going to be coloring these with alcohol markers. Now this is my go-to. As you will have heard on my channel before that coloring is not my favorite part of card making. I don't think I'm particularly good at it at all. But here I'm going to use these four colors, the light green blend, the hydrangea blend, the citrus blend, and the coral blend. And this is what helps me out so much because every one of these markers has three different shades. So it has a light, a medium, and a dark. And that means I don't have to sift through. I don't have to look at color charts. I don't have to do any of that. I just look at the colors, what they are. And if that works for me, I know I've got three that are all in that same family and I'm able to blend them all together without having to figure it out. So this is what works for me. But in saying that, 
There are so many other ways that you could color these gorgeous flowers. If you made your card base out of a watercolor, a cardstock, then you would be able to use anything watercolors. Um, you could use watercolor pencils. If you don't want to do that, then even just normal coloring pencils would look gorgeous. You could use ink. You could do a little bit of masking and just use some finger dobbers to do the inking. There are so many different ways to color these up. And I always say, just do what works for you. Um, I felt like doing this kind of coloring today, but honestly, usually I wouldn't choose to color such a big image because I know that it's not my not my forte but I really did enjoy it and sometimes you're just in the mood so here's where you can see I'm all finished with my coloring and it looks a bit funny because of that strip down the middle but when I take this off I really love the look of this card it's very simple very easy to achieve and we did it using just the one stamp set and again, I feel like you would have a choice of sentiments that you could put on this. I'm enjoying this curly greetings stamp set at the moment. This could be a get well soon card, a thank you card, a thinking of you card. I mean, it could be a happy birthday card. It could be, you can just choose whatever you want to put in the middle here. And there was a couple of cards that I needed today. So I really just knew that I could use pretty much any of them, but I am going to make this one the birthday one. But I don't want that little bit up the top, so I am going to cut my stamps, which this will be just fine. And one really good thing when you are cutting your stamps is that even though you're cutting them apart, they go back together like a puzzle piece, so you can pop them back together as they were originally intended to be really easily and without it kind of looking disjointed. So they just fit back in and you can stamp it as is. Now at this point, once I came to put the sentiment on, I did want to put it back in the stamping platform because I've done so much work on this card already. And although I'm going to add a sentiment to it, there's a couple more things that I'm going to do just for finishing touches to this card to kind of um, bring it to life a little bit, I think. So I'm going to stamp happy birthday in the same uh, onyx black ink. And I was able to stamp it a couple of times just to get a really nice crisp impression and then a couple of finishing things that I'm going to do. So one, I'm going to take a ruler and just a fine point black pen and I'm going to draw lines straight down the middle there. I felt like it wasn't quite defined enough and the edges weren't quite crisp. So I think adding this gorgeous black line was the perfect touch. And then just because I can kind of feel like there's a lot of blank uh, white space and sometimes I have trouble leaving the white space there, but I did want to add in just a little bit more. So I'm going to take the same black pen and just draw in some little dots. Now, if you have a stamp that can do this, then that would work well also. But honestly, the black pen just adds those extra little couple of bits and pieces. And I do some different sizes, some smaller, some bigger, and I just pop them here, there and everywhere. Now, I could have left this card here and I could have told you that this card was absolutely gorgeous. But, <laughs> as you'll know when you are coloring with alcohol markers, that they tend to bleed through and that's exactly what happened. And I should have thought about that, but I didn't. And that's okay too, because where there is an accident, there's always a way to fix it. So I was looking at this card here and obviously I'm not going to ditch it at this point. And there are a few different things that you could do. You could have cut the card front off here and mounted it onto another card base that would work well. Or you can just do what I did and I was looking at the colors that are in the front of the card. And just a really nice easy way to do this would be using this little cardstock pack. These are all four and a quarter by five and a half inch pieces already. So I just cut a couple of them down and this purple matches the purple that we used on the flowers at the front. So this was nice and easy. This is a good quality thick cardstock so I can pop it on with some liquid glue and it's not going to buckle or anything. This is the Ranger multi-medium in the matte finish so it's a perfect glue and this way it just looks like we've gone to the effort of finishing off the middle of our card really nicely. <laughs> I really like this card and I hope you do too. And I've even got a wee helper on my knee here today too. Take care, I will see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Take care and we will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!